Hmm. Oh, hello. Hey, Tiernade. Um, yeah, okay. Are you the only one today? Like nobody uh, else turning up? I, I think they're supposed to. I, I know at least one one more person is joining. But okay, all right. No worries. Yeah, we'll just I wait for yeah, some more people to join us. Yeah, if we're uh, here, I just want a quick question. Um, uh, Because uh, I'm like uh, doing this to transfer the points back to university. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, and they said that I need like a an email from you regarding the grades afterwards. So no, like, no, no I don't think that's usually. Uh, no, I, I the, mean, like, uh, I need to screenshot an email of you, like, because because the grade right now in um Canvas is not like out of a hundred percent. They want it in the range, like what, like a letter grade or like a, a range out of a hundred percent. Yeah, so, you'll get it. You'll get it. No, but you'll get it in the, through Foothill's uh, portal. Oh, we'll get it. Do you do you know when we'll get it by? Um, well, you know, I, so suppose I submit it on Saturday, uh -huh. um, they will probably hold it for, um, you know, four or five days before they, in summer, they'll hold it for four or five days, I think. Oh, you mean like on the Canvas photo or, or which one? No, on, um, in, in, not in Canvas. Um, no, Canvas is only a teaching aid. It's not, it's nothing to do with the administration. You'll we'll have to log into myportal.fotel.edu.org. Oh, I see. Yeah, and then there's a section there that uh, says my grades, and that's the official transcript. You know, it. You know, you can download it with the foothill emblem and all, uh, and you know, I think that would be a much more convincing. Um, yeah, than the email. I see. Yeah, than an email from some random professor. Say, yeah, I know Tyranid. He's, you know, oh, my sons are, you know, my son and daughter. They're really, they're, their books are really good. You got to buy them. <laughs> like that. I, I, I get it. Wait, um, you said uh, on my portal, and then which one? Uh, I I uh, I actually don't know, but there's lots of people in our class who would know this. Okay, um, okay. when you log into my portal, that's a banner. It's, the, it's called a banner. Okay, there is somewhere in my portal. You can actually Google for these things. You know, you can actually ask uh, okay. uh, Chat GPT too, right? Uh, how do I find my grades in my in my portal at Foothill? It'll tell you. And I'm pretty sure Google will just tell you. You don't even have to use the AI stuff uh -huh. um, because that's how I found it. You know, a long time ago, I took some classes in um, in the. Um, uh, art department at Foothill, uh, so ceramics and all. Uh, and so they have really nice uh, classes outside of uh, you know heavy duty computer science. Uh, you know that's one of the things I recommend to uh, our students too, uh, especially the ones who are in two B and two C. They're demanding courses, uh, and uh, and and some of the uh, 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 is it recording? Yeah, okay, good. Um, so what I found that some of the students do is that um, they'll just overload with lots and lots of units because they need a certain number of units for their year or you know their university or something requires a certain number of units. But uh, the thing is, many students don't manage to figure out that not all of the units need to be challenging courses. Universities don't care. Nobody cares, even if you're applying for a job, okay? If I'm like the top software house and you're applying for a job, I don't care if you got an A plus, triple, triple A plus in history. I don't care, you know, I don't give a shit. Uh -huh. um, but I do want to know that, you know, did that, this is a tech job, and uh, uh, is that person solid in data structures, okay, uh, and uh, is it, and, and can I only find it, find out through an interview uh, and, and test him for like an hour or so, uh, or can, uh, is there any online evidence, can I just Google the person's name and, and come across their Reddit profile where they've talked about incredible things, or Stack, stack Overflow, right, all of these technical places where you have your name, um, and you've uh, contributed, those are the things that are valuable for employers uh, increasingly, you know, because education is starting to get free. Nobody cares about, you know, Ivy League and all these other name colleges anymore because, you know, even those colleges, they're making courses and they're free now, right? Mm -hmm. You go to Harvard, yeah, Harvard CS50 is free. Anyone can do it. Yeah. That's true. Uh, and, you know, and, and uh, Stanford, all of these places that people play, pay a lot of bucks for. Uh, they're now going free with their courses. So names are not going to matter, name and form, okay? What, what will matter is what people know in the end. And, 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 and interviews are a, uh, I think, in my opinion, you know, in fact, that is why, one of the reasons why <clears throat> I'm actually going to make a post at some point uh, saying, in fact, you know, one of my friends from Google is uh, uh, going to be visiting me a couple of days later. Uh, I could tell them too, because, you know, uh, top software companies out there, Microsoft, Google, all of these people, um, uh, even though they're computer software people, they employ an inefficient way to make resource hires. Okay. So in any company, 
there are two kinds of hires you'll make as, as a founder of a company, okay? One of them is our core hires, okay? They're not resource hires. Core hires means they work on the vision and the idea. You, you can't afford to have a difference of opinion, right? If, if there's a difference of opinion with someone in the core team, they're out, okay? Not because, you know, they're not enemies, but they're out because you, you can't have a difference of opinion there. So the core team is different. So you assemble that based on personal knowledge, of what the hell is, you know, the, the, these, these people are doing. Is he or she a good coder? Is he or she a good, you know, uh, 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 person in uh, interacting technically? Yeah. So that's, but the, as the company grows, uh, you can't have everyone be a core hire because the core hire people are going to be like top-notch people, right? So they, they, you have big ticket items. So you can't have everyone be core hires. So as the company grows, you want to make resource hires. Resource hires are where you don't care if that person is an Albert Einstein or, you know, they're going to make a fundamental change to the company trajectory. Um, but you have the, the core team has identified incredible visions. And there's lots and lots of things that's broken it down into. And these things just need to be implemented. And the core team doesn't have time to do it, but they'll hire someone to do it like a contractor. And the core team has enough knowledge to just look over it and say, well, this is good, this is not good, right? So those kinds of people are resource hires. Now, in any company, um, even the big, you know, uh, yeah, right? So uh, they make the core hires very, very rarely, right? I, I, especially in the beginning stages, they make a lot of hires, but uh, afterwards it, you need to really be on a one-on-one -on -one basis, you know, a personal basis with some someone, you know, right? But the resource hires, a lot of people do. Uh, and I, in my opinion, um, even though they are computing companies, they are uh, uh, pursuing a, an inefficient, right? Low efficiency process for on uh, for making resource hires. You know, the vast majority, 90% of the company's hires will be resource hires, like Google, all of these people. They, you know, come in, you work on this team, and these are deliverables, right? And you can, you know, meet your deliverable, go on to the next, you know, level two, level three, and so on and so forth, just move like that. But they're still resource people, even though, you know, you, you have it good. Because, you know, good resource people are also hard to find. Right. And, and, and so how do these people, uh, companies find these good resource people? Um, they find it, find them right now only through interviews because you don't have time to actually engage with the resource people one on one. Right. So they assemble some people, they have some tasks and, and go through it. And, 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 and out of the filtration process, these top companies maybe have a success rate of, of 40 to 50 percent. Right, forty to fifty percent of the people that pass through these interviews are basically, you know, like rock star, can you know, quality, right? But look at it from a computer scientist point of view. Forty to fifty percent is, you know, bad efficiency. I well, that's not for me. I, I don't care, right? I don't want that kind of stuff, right? So uh, if I want to make a hire, I want to be like super duper sure that is, the, you know, I want upwards of ninety percent efficiency, meaning that if I invest time in finding, if uh, looking for talent in some person, I better be, you know, if, if that if I bring that person into the company, I got to have a better than 90% chance that person is going to be a rock star or, you know, do something really cool. Even, even though they're not the core hire on the resource team, right? How do you bring rock stars in? Not rock star court, you know, right? So, and and so, so I've decided, uh, so I've actually inadvertently created this incredible tool, I think, uh, because, you know, that's how I onboarded uh, interns for nonlinear media too. Uh, is to basically just uh, um, say that uh, the uh, primary criterion for getting an internship at nonlinear media uh, is not an interview, but is basically have, having to dog read, okay? Dog read, and once anyone who's dog read, uh, I actually take the time to look at the Reddit profile in detail, right? So that's giving me a 360 degree view of the person, right? Is they, are they technically good? And are they good in interacting with other technical minds? Okay, and if they're good, then I send them an email saying, are you interested in internship, right? And, and that works out beautifully because, you know, then, you know, it's, it, there's a much better chance. Upwards of 90%, I think. I, don't, I haven't tested it yet, but uh, so that's what I'm, I'm actually trying to do. So in fact, you know what, uh, Red Dog, uh, yeah, that's why, that's why I, 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 uh, people were asking me, you know, they want to do 2C. Oh, you, you, you guys are 2B, right? To be, yeah, yeah, okay. To be, and some, some people send me emails saying, you know, is there a 2C and I want to do a 2C. Uh, yeah, well, there is a 2C, but I'm not teaching the 2C anymore at Foothill because I'm, you know, the the the, the, the kinds of students I get at Foothill, um, you know, only a, a small number of them are like you guys, you know, really interested in the subject. A lot of people are just there to just get a check mark on the transcript and they're just blowing through the, you know, and they don't even care if chat GPT or, you know, a friend writes the assignments for them. Yeah, they just want to get through because they know that, you know, my future is not here. Uh, so I don't need to learn. 
Uh, my future is maybe at some big name institution and I'm going to just use this as a route to get there. And there, when I get there, I'll do my you know, big uh, achievements. That is the wrong attitude. You got to be doing your big achievements all the way, you know, since you're born, really. Because if you're waiting to do your big achievement, nobody ever does it. Because you'll be waiting until your last breath. So you got to say, I'm going to be, you know, kicking ass all the time. If I'm doing anything, I'm going to do the best at it. Yeah. And um, so as, um, <clears throat> where was I going with that? Um, yeah, yeah. So people email me saying, you know, it was, yeah. So I wasn't getting the students um, that um, uh, I was looking for in the sense that, you know, these are students that need to be committed and interested because otherwise, Red is going to be a chore. If you're not interested in computer science, it's practically impossible to get through Red, okay? Unless you copy or get information from other people. But if you're interested in computer science, there is no way you can fail Red, okay? If you're really interested in computer science, you'll, you know, it'll, it'll be a bit of a struggle, but you will actually come out uh, feeling really, really good about yourself, right? And you know, a lot of people chase money and power and glory and fame, okay? All of that fleeting, okay? But when you gain some internal knowledge like this, Okay, and it basically has got your back. Even when you're sleeping, that is a completely different feel feeling altogether. And you'll feel that, right, when you master that. And uh, unfortunately, I think, um, unfortunately, people in the sciences, uh, not so much in art, okay, that's, that's what I found. It's, maybe it's just a cultural thing, okay? In the sciences, uh, I find, especially students, right, even my own kids, uh, it, it, the culture and, 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 and in school and everywhere, right? They are not instilling the um, discipline of practice, okay? Now, the discipline of practice, it's like super duper important. You know, coming from an Indian school, right? This is what it is. This is practice is the most important, whatever the hell you do. And it's practice is important in, and it's missing in science. This is crazy, isn't it? Okay, if you go to art, if you go to my, you know, Andy Rubel's class at, you know, at, at Foothill and, and try ceramics, he says, oh, I can't throw a bowl, okay? Then Andy will say, sit down and throw 10,000 bowls, okay? <laughs> then you'll get the bowl right. Yeah, and I've done that. You know, I, I sat down and my sweat was, you know, uh, I, on a hot day, my sweat was pouring into, uh, from my forehead into my you know, bowl and messing with the clay, but I've done that. And he told me that he did, did, he's done that for nights on end when he did it at, in Kentucky, some, you know, some place down south. And he did, it's practice, practice, practice. Now, if, you, if you're music, right? So if you're in music, this is because in Indian context, mostly it's music these days, right? Music, even here, if you go and learn music, then they say, well, you, you got it technically right. No, even if you, after you get it technically right, you got to practice, right? Getting it technically right is one kind of practice, but after you get it technically right, doing it again and again and again, so that it just becomes part of you, then you discover what's between the notes, not just one note to another. And that only comes with practice. And so you got to do it thousands of times. But you know, how do people do thousands of, uh, you know, something thousands of times? And uh, that is practice. Uh, and you only do something thousands of times if you are not bored by it, okay? If you're bored by it, I'm not gonna do something if I'm bored, right? I just give up after a while. And the way to not get bored is to, you know, I've come up with two reasons, okay? The first reason is just to be naturally interested in it, right? And say, you know, I'm, I'm just, this is great for me, right? I, I would rather do this than if, you know, Biden were to send Air Force One for a dinner with the head of heads of state, you know? No, hang on, I wanna do this first, okay? So that kind of passion. So people have that kind of interest. So that is one, situation where you go in. And the reason why that is important is the practice. It gives you perseverance. And, uh, and, and that person keeps doing it at the cost of everything else. You're just doing it, right? And, and so perseverance is what leads you know, uh, to the next stage. Because everybody, I think, is a genius, okay? Everybody is a genius, but nobody gets to express it because genius needs practice to be polished, right? So your diamond without polish is you know, it's like a stone. Everybody is a diamond, but only practice will polish it. But sciences, unfortunately, it says this, you know, just understand, understand, understand. And the danger with saying understand something is that people will say, oh, I understand it when they have a high level understanding. Yeah, it's like, oh yeah, yeah, I know how this works. Because radio waves come through the air and you know, transistor and so on and so forth. Yeah, yeah, even kids can understand that. And people think falsely, falsely that they understand something when they only have a high level view. But the real understanding is going right down to the detail and saying, why, how does it happen? You know, all the, because in, 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 in these uh, programming quests too, the, the really understanding it, you have to go right down to the detail and say, well, you know, every single cycle, what the hell is going on there? And then you figure it out. And so, but the, the thing that makes it not boring 
is just or your natural interest in it. Now, what, what happens if you don't have natural interest in it? Okay. So, or you know, or you don't know that you're naturally interested. Okay. The other class of people for whom genius awakens, right? So genius is polished and they actually know what the hell is going on. They also have to persevere. There's no going around it. You have to practice, you have to persevere. Okay. But however, they are not interested in this. However, these people are what I would call the born again category. There's lots of people out there, right? They just look fed up with the world. They're not, they're not interested in all the routine stuff that people are going after. Okay. They've been there, done it. I don't care. I say it. Okay. I don't, I don't want any of that because I got something better to do. Or they were totally pissed off the world. You know, some, some people even, you know, are negative about the world, but they still do something because there's, they don't, they don't want to interface with the world. I'll just do this. Okay. And, and so they do this. So there's all these reasons, but at, at the end of the day, what gets you through the door is just perseverance and whatever it takes to give you perseverance. One is passion and the other, the other is, you know, fed up with the world and ordinary stuff out there. You say, you know, what am I going to do? You know, I don't want ordinary stuff. So, uh, and, you know, I, rather than dying, I might as well do something, right? So, uh, and that kind of attitude. So those two kinds of attitudes are the ones that actually build uh, perseverance because you say, I don't have anything else to do. I'm going to do this. And once you start doing this after a little while, after you dig the trench a little bit, it, it you know, you start getting interested. And then the passion act automatically comes. And the thing is, in all of the art classes, they consciously and explicitly drill passion, you know, drill practice into the into students. They say, you got to practice. They don't do it in science. It's just, you know, have a high level understanding and you go through with an A plus, that totally does not make sense for me. Because, you know, how many people who actually pass the traditional uh, uh, 2C, right? 2C, the government said, if you pass 2C, you should be able to do this. Okay, so, uh, and if, how many people who pass a traditional 2C in any of these universities, right? Well, maybe not some of the, right? This is, this is a, take all of these colleges, right? Um, I'm not confident that when they come out of 2C and I give them a heavy duty task, they'll actually be able to do it. Many of them can't even do hello world. You know, like, you know, right? Many people who get into 2B can't do a hello world first. They actually have to remember because they've done it once, maybe in a different language, they've forgotten, right? But it's gotta be part of you. And um, that level of practice, and, and also science, okay, and, and, and in not just computer science. In science, too, uh, what I found is that where practice helps, the ordinary physicists, ordinary experimenters, and, and the expert scientists, real scientists, okay, what's the difference? Okay, the real scientists know exactly what to control for, okay, and they'll do fine grain controls, okay? They'll say, well, you know what, I want to control for uh 47 hertz to 50 hertz okay so i want to i want to make control so that you know i only control for everything other than 48 hertz or something like that so it's a fine level of detail whereas you know a a, a, a beginner would control for, i want to control for some frequency between 40 and 80 <laughs> something like that okay but they'll still have control but uh the why, why does an expert why does an expert control for such fine grain control so that's why they're able to drive straight at the two uh, because they're not going here and there why are they able to do that and, and they're able to do that because repeatedly practicing something will start exposing you to the nuances. And you say, I'm going to shave off a bit more here, shave off a bit more here. But you, what you shave off wasn't even visible to you before. And you can see this in uh, actually, if, you, if any of you don't know music, for example, right? Uh, and uh, and you, you pick up a violin or something like that. Many of us won't be able to tell the microtonal uh, differences around a note. And it all sounds the same. But, uh, and you can make an experiment. And, and make these microtonal differences and keep playing it every day, right? Every day, play it and listen to it. After a while, you'll say, well, it doesn't sound the same. You'll actually be sensitive to the difference. And that's only by repeated exposure again and again. So in science, when you, when you start play, you know, measuring the period of pendulum, right? You get, it, you, know, you get an approximate equation. But you say, well, the equation, okay, it kind of works. Okay, it fits the curve. But you know, the, the quantities, I, I got pi to the 2.7, 2.1, okay? It looks like it should be pi squared or something like that, okay? You have an intuition. And, and then you say, okay, well, if it's pi squared, yeah, maybe I'm not controlling for everything. So let me take a look. And you start looking again and again and again. Every time you take a look at a scientific setup, you will discover one or more things that you can tweak and control for, which you had overlooked before. And it is exactly the same as you will see in programming. The first time you get a program and it kind of works, okay? And, and then uh, you say, well, I'm gonna, it, it works. I'm not getting the trophies, but well, no, no, not in 2C, right? Outside, well, it works, it, you know, I got my assignment done, right? But if, you, but if you keep at it and say, well, it's working, but you know, what if I change the input? 
It doesn't work. If I change the input, but just a little bit, okay? Just one more null pointer here or something like that. You know, increase the vector size by one, decrease it by one. All these corner edge cases, which you tend to miss. But in most classes, they don't care. If you don't care about the edge cases, you'll still go, you know, that's a loose, loose path through the graph. It's not a tight path, you know, or, or you know, so it's, it's just going anywhere in here, you pass the class. But that won't cut you, that, that won't set you up for a, a professional job out there, right? So imagine if you go to a, a neurosurgeon who says, you know, I don't know how to use a scalpel, but you know, I got an ax here, just sit down and I'll take your, <laughs> you know, a sample of your brain, right? So th that's what people are doing because they don't have a fine grain, but, uh, but how do you, uh, they, in order to learn to use a fine, Tools, you got to keep at it again and again, repeatedly, repeatedly, yeah? And um, one time when I was a kid, I cut my own hair uh, and then it was a total mess. And then I went to school uh, and my uh, teacher said, well, you know what, go back home and get a proper haircut. Uh, <laughs> not get a haircut and get a real job. He said, go back home and get a haircut. And he thought I didn't have money. So get a haircut, you want money, I'll give you some money. <laughs> and I then, no, no, I said, no, 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 don't, <laughs> I'll go and get a haircut. And then I went to a barber shop and the barber looked at me and he said, oh yeah, are you stupid? You cut your own hair. Uh, you know, before I started cutting uh, human hair, I had to uh, practice on a, on a pot, right? <laughs> With a knife on a pot uh, for several months before they get to cut on a uh, human. Apparently, that's what he told me. I don't know, how do they, how do they cut on a, right? Maybe he was just shaving or something like that. But anyway, he said that, but again, it's practice, right? All of these tools of the trade require practice. And in any of these sciences, even in lab, right? Lab sciences, how many lab hours do you get in physics and chemistry here at Foothill? Any of these colleges? Right? So lab hours, you get like four, four or five hours a, a week. That's totally not sufficient. If you want to measure anything at all, you won't get any time. You'll just do one experiment and get, you know, the numbers that you are supposed to get and you'll go, right? But in order to get it right, you just have to be there, uh, dwell on it and say, well, you know what? It works. Now I'm going to change something. Still it work? Does it still work? Does it still work? Does it still work? Keep on changing. That's what gives you a feel for, wow, okay. So that's why, you know, uh, uh, you know, an apple accelerates towards the earth or something, something like that. So you get that uh, intuition, only practice. Anyway, so uh, um, oh, yeah, actually genius, right? Genius. There you go, go, uh, yeah. In fact, what you should do, uh, those of you who finished your uh, uh, ninth, ninth quest and you're interested in this kind of thing uh, and, and you want to continue with this, um, uh, there is no, uh, you know, questing track, I think, at Foothill. Uh, for 2C. Uh, I'm going to stop at 2B basically. Um, and, but if you're really interested, just enroll in the, uh, in the boot camp, right? Genius boot camp. It's free, 100% free. And the reason I set up this boot camp, really, the, the, the reason is that people were asking me after 2B, what do I do? Right. And then I say, you know, go and quest and they don't know. And, and so I just and there's, they don't have a community around them. So I just set up this boot camp with, you know, the interns, the interns I hired at Nonlinear Media. They actually created this boot camp. There was um, a lot of it was their idea. And, and so uh, it's uh, it's free. Uh, and, and the idea is that people will just go through it. And as you're doing red, you're going to helping you go just like this good community. You're going to be helping people uh, earlier on. And as they go to red, they're going to be helping people. So we'll just set up a self uh as sufficient, you know, a cycle, so a feedback network. Uh, so you can you can just enroll. And if you want to do two B, right? So here's a really cool thing. Um, would you have liked it if you just got into this class and all of your assignments are already done, right? So you didn't have anything to do. In in my classes, if you think about it, the assignments and the quest are really like eighty percent of the work. Even though they're like only sixty percent of the grade, they're like eighty percent of the work because you got to know a lot of stuff before you get to do the assignments, right? Uh, and you got the modules too. Uh, so suppose you had gotten to this class and you'd already done everything. You would actually have a hell of a great time here, right? Because you don't have to do anything. You just keep responding to other people's posts, right? Having fun, uh, doing pretty pictures on <laughs> in graph nine. All this thing, you got a lot more time and uh, you can use that time to enroll in other classes too, uh, right? So you got, because it'll be, you'll have more time on your hands. So do the Genius Bootcamp because exactly the same, um, Quest or in the Genius Bootcamp. So, if, uh, oh, you're doing 2B. I should tell this to my 2A students. If they do my bootcamp, uh, they'll be done with the green quest by the time the quarter begins. And, and then they can enroll in my 2B, but they won't have any homework. And, uh, and I think that should be fun. Okay. So I, it'll be fun to have uh, some students who, are, who, don't have, who don't have a lot of homework. Uh, and uh, yeah. So, but you can go all the way to red. Okay. So, uh, yeah, please, please yeah, consider enrolling uh, because. I'm I'm planning to uh, leave 
the Genius Bootcamp, you know, in a few quarters, uh, until it, uh, as, after, after it gets a little bit of momentum, uh, then the students can run it, or it can run by itself, because the seniors will be teaching the juniors. Um, and um, yeah, so it, so that's why we set it up that way. <clears throat> so if, if you're interested, uh, just go ahead and uh, enroll and, and, and keep it going, right? Even after I'm gone, you just keep it going, because I think it's a very good and a unique way of learning computer science which every, everything you learn, you also have to apply it immediately into a pretty much a real world situation, right? Because most of the data structures you create now, <clears throat> uh, they are directly applicable. It, you can directly use them in place of anything <clears throat> that you would download from STL. Well, right now, you uh, did you use STL in, in this class? No, you didn't use STL for 2B. Yeah, so next in 2C, you use the standard template library of, uh, of, uh, of C++. And the standard template library is really cool because uh, suppose you've written a particular data structure, a particular data structure that can either have an integer payload or a string payload or any other object payload, object XYZ payload class, yeah? So you can have anything in there. Uh, generally, you have to have, write three different classes because they have three different things inside of them. But templates allow the, you to write just one class and the compiler will generate the three classes for you behind the scenes automatically. Uh, so you just template things. And that's a very powerful feature, just like generics in Java. Uh, so that you'll get introduced to that, but that's not the major thing. And you know, that's like one <laughs> half, half an hour of instruction in 2C, but you'll get to use templates and also you used to, uh, and you'll get to create templates too. You'll get to create templates uh, and data structures. And some of the algorithms, um, in fact, the shark algorithm that people are working on in, in 2C, it's actually faster than the one that is available in the C++ standard library. Right. So, and in fact, I had an extra credit, uh, extra credit option open for my 2C students for a long time. Nobody really uh, was able to make a major headway. They didn't have time maybe. Is why is a shark algorithm faster than the C++ algorithm that's published out there, you know, or, or, or in the standard library? Because it's twice as fast. Uh, or, you know, the C++ standard li library, sort even optimized, right? It's, it's twice as slow. And why is it? And uh, so I had a, a theory. But I won't, I won't, you know, bias you with my theory. But if you ever get to that, uh, when you will get to it. If you're going to do red, you will get to that. It's just a sorting algorithm. That's all. It's just a simple sorting algorithm. It's quick sort. Okay. But the quick sort is actually twice as fast as what you get in the C++ version. The C++ sort is probably the fastest sort you can get. It's exactly the same as machine assembler, really, almost, right? It's one to one. So it's the fastest ever sort you can get for an architecture is C++ store sort. But it does some crazy things, like you know, maintain a pivot. And, and uh at a fixed location and um and then switch to insertion at some point so it has to do some uh, you know uh, checks and all uh, which i felt was uh, unnecessary and actually added to the uh, complexity maybe that is it but uh, it will be interesting if it, it is probably a little research project right extra credit research project if you get to it but you know to see to see uh, so you will get to do that in genius right if you if you if you enroll in the genius bootcamp and it's, it's self paced you can do it at your own speed and if you have time during the summer um, don't yeah right summer I, I told you again last time also i told you i think it's very tempting because summer says i got a lot of time now and and there's lots of activities like vacations uh, you know socializing uh, and then Fortnite, video games, you know, long uh, serials on Netflix and uh, Prime that you waited for a long time to catch up on. All these things, they just pile up. All you have to remember is that you're spending high value currency to watch those things. Essentially, what that means is that your time right now is the most valuable thing ever. And what you get, that time, if you put that to good use to learn a useful life skill, that is like compound interest many times over in the next few years. So you got, and you got to learn a skill that requires practice, okay? And, and I think that is a good uh, test for you yourself as you go and pick courses out there, right? Get courses, uh, uh, enroll in courses that require you to also consciously practice every day, deliberate conscious practice, you know, drive yourself to it and you got to do it. And sometimes you say, I can't do it, I, you know, but you got to say, I'm going to do it because there's nothing else I can do right now. There's nothing else I want to do right now is worth it. This is the most worth thing that I can do right now, right? So you got to get into that mindset. It is possible. It is possible. And lots of people have done it. And when you do that, you'll basically be set up, okay? You won't be beholden to uh, other people's validation of you, right? Uh, and you'll just say, I know this thing. I don't need someone else to tell me I know this, right? So you'll that is the feeling. That is the feeling you're going for. But if you want to make your A plus uh, something that you would be glad you got, because I wouldn't be glad if I just got an easy A plus, I, but I would be glad if I got a, 
um, you know, really hard A class. No matter whether it's my class or anyone else's class, that's what most people are going for. So take it seriously. I think that is the other thing. You know, a lot of people say, you know, oh, this is a community college, or you know, I'll just go there uh, and you know, I, I, on my way to some uh, some other place. Don't nobody in the world, nothing ever is on your way to some place. Everything is the place where you need to be at that time. So, you know, just treat everything like that and you'll just give everything its due importance, due time. Uh, and uh, essentially what you are looking for is how, how much of myself can I improve by learning that? Um, but improve meaning not improve for the world, right? Improve for yourself. Saying uh, how much am I better off mentally, happier, uh, more self-sufficient, less dependent on other people, if I know that. That's a question we always have to ask. Right? How much does knowing that make me an independent person, it, truly independent, right? It, not just you know financially independent and secure like that. Independent means you can think and say whatever you want without repercussion, right? As long as it's not you know bad things, uh, uh, right? So you 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 are free to do anything. You're not beholden to someone, so authority saying, well, you know, if you do this, you're going to be fired, and you you will be ready to say, yeah, okay, I'm ready to be fired because I know some real great stuff and nobody will do that right if you really know your stuff and you're a good person to interact with nobody's going to fire you um so but then you will be in a position to say i'm ready to be fired although nobody will fire you and 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 only people who are ready to be fired are also good hires because anyone that i've hired in the past who was not ready to be fired any day had some percent of his brain right some percent of his brain his or her brain uh was devoted to taking care of the job and so I was only getting 90% or 50% of the cycle sometimes. And, you know, the rest of it was, you know, if I do that, I, I can't take any chances. Uh, I can't take any risks. Uh, this is they're not completely. So uh, because if they lose the job, they're screwed. But when a person has basically got to a stage where, you know, I don't care if I lose a job because I'm sad. I'm only doing this because I'm having fun. Okay. Uh, that's the person you want to hire because they're doing that because they have fun. When they have fun, when they're doing something, they'll do the best everything without you telling them yeah and that's why managers love these people because managers love these people because they don't have to do any work because they they already know that this is what they that person needs to, they're doing it because they love it uh, I, I don't need to tell them to do it so i don't know if all of this is relevant but ultimately where i was going with all this is that yeah, enroll in the genius boot camp if you can uh, anytime right no hurry at all but i would prefer uh if you if you're going to do my two uh well yeah i right, okay. no, just do it again I, yeah, you can do it anytime. You can do it any, whenever you're free. But I would uh, say that uh, do do it, okay? Uh, because I don't think there's anything comparable to CS2C, the red red quests in the world today. And I've, I've had a look. Uh, there's, you know, places where you can go like lead code and other places where you solve problems, you know, maybe in solo mode, solitary mode, and, and then you get some scores and all these things and hacker ranks and uh, these things. More social and more, yeah. Um, but I think that uh, a systematic approach, yeah, a systematic approach that introduces concepts at measured intervals, okay? That's the other thing that is missing in all the public sites out there. This is in tons and tons of YouTube videos on all of the concepts in C++ and everything, right? But as many learners know, it is like super duper important to have to, for, for the lessons to be selected such that the jump is just right. It shouldn't be too, the next lesson shouldn't be too far that I'm gonna struggle by jumping to it. And it shouldn't be too uh, close uh, that and I overstep it and I'm, I'm kind of lost. <clears throat> yeah, it's like the learning rate in machine learning, okay? Because otherwise, you know, you won't settle at the parabola minimum, right? So you'll keep jumping from this side to this side. Because unless your learning rate is small, you just, you know, that only then you can settle in the minimum. Uh, and so, um, <clears throat> where was I going with that? Yeah, yeah. So the lessons need to be selected and, and they're very few like that. Um, and uh, so actually I took a look at CS50 at Harvard at some point uh, as well, because some of the students were saying that's also free and people can enroll in it. Um, but uh, unfortunately it doesn't seem to be all on, you know, the core computer science concepts. Maybe they have a separate class for core computer science concepts, but this one seems to be, uh, uh, when I looked at it, it had more machine learning problems, data manipulation problems and so on and so forth using Python and things like that, rather than core computer science-y kinds of things like, you know, implementing uh, a complex data structure and actually uh, you know like neo being become you know your spirit becoming the same as the data structure so you know where the uh, you know filaments are dangling and and so that kind of thing is missing i'm pretty sure there are classes out there they're teaching it but it's just harder to find and if you go to the youtube videos and say i want to learn computer science 
you'll find lots and lots of ones that you know you don't know i've done this should i do this one or that one then you'll do the wrong ones you'll waste a lot of time so that's why i think that uh, some of these classes <clears throat> which is do you know red right so other classes like red too uh, which have the 2c material uh, the topics that I selected, okay. Well, actually, the topics I selected, a lot, a lot of them came from Michael Losef, the previous uh, professor who taught uh, CS2C at Foothill. Uh, but then I swapped out a few topics like sorting and you know, the, and, and 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 stuff. But a lot of these topics directly come from them. And it, uh, in my opinion, they were the best choices for many places because uh, after you finish one, the next one is going to be a challenge, but it's not going to be an insurmountable challenge, okay? Because to get from here to here is like I can tell you in 2C, it's going to be hard. Anyone who's done one and looking at nine and say, I'm going to be doing nine and nine, you know, in, in, in weeks, it's impossible. I can never do that. However, that's because they're looking at that long jump there. However, if they do the next one, right, they'll find it's not a bit, big struggle. It is a struggle, but it's, 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 it is, you know, surmountable, tractable, right? So if you do that step by step, say, hey, actually, I'm, I am at nine now. I thought I'd never get here, but I'm here because I took all the steps one by one. So you got to do it step by step. and. Um, when you do that, uh, I am sure, okay, because every single person who's done red so far, gone all the way to the end, um, I, 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 I look at the feedback they uh, leave on the forums, like you guys are leaving on red, you know, Kayla wrote a fantastic post, you know, even I wouldn't have thought, <laughs> there's uh, uh, all these uh, uh, things in the things, right, so uh, a lot of people have written these um, uh, posts, and they've found things that I didn't know was in the system. And a lot of this has emerged only because of you guys. Because if it was just a question, think about it, right? If it was just a question system and it was Canvas or some closed form discussion forum, right? And it disappears at the end of every quarter. Bam, 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 like that. Yeah, I don't know, questioning won't be any fun, right? Because you're gonna be closing, you know, questioning pretty much in a silo. There's no community involvement. And it's, it, I, I don't think it'll be fun. But uh, coincidentally, I didn't realize that, right? Because when I was doing the uh, discussion forum uh, in 2018, maybe, at that time, I, I, my son was with me too. And he suggested uh, that, why don't you use Reddit instead of Canvas uh, for your uh, discussion? And uh, and for some reason, I just unthinkingly said, yeah, let's do Reddit. And uh, I did Reddit. He, in fact, he created the first Reddit for me. Um, um, and, and then because of the Reddit, I think, the community involvement just took off, right? People helping each other. I've never, ever seen that in other classes, okay? Even the classes that I used to teach, where uh, I used to have office hours and then students will come. Uh, many students will come outside my door, knock on the door and ask me a question. Uh, and I explain to them. And five minutes later, some other student comes and asks me the same question. And crazy th the crazy thing is <clears throat> in the next assignment, the students whom I help are making the same kind of error one more time. And uh, so they weren't really getting anything. It's just getting answers. Um, but here, uh, it is cra it's crazy good, isn't it? Because uh, someone asked a question There's so many people to have you know to give good answers good kind answers right good kind answers and so those are the things that i really i myself started uh enjoying and uh, after kayla's post and some of the other people's posts i realized that maybe that's why i actually love reading the red post uh, made by you guys because it's not for the you know for the matter and uh, 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 different ways of using a, a try or things like that yeah okay it's all out there and and you know most of these things but what makes it interesting for me? Because you know, think about it. I've seen these quests and people discussing about discussing these quests for how many quarters now? Since 2019. So it's, it's so if I'm looking for just the content, I'm not going to find, you know, new content in a way. Uh, so content is not there. What I found enjoyable about reading the quests and reading your Reddit, the post that you make, uh, is not the content you're making. As you know, it is the content in in a way. But the content stated in new, with the new eyes, new, uh, fresh insight, fresh look, and the way that people are interacting with each other and, uh, you know, helping each other. When someone asks a, a question, uh, you know, uh, people are very kind and nice answers. So they're all fantastic. Okay, maybe these are going to be like a super duper good food for chat GPT like systems later on, because, you know, if a chat GPT was to mine uh, the three subreddits, uh, it'll create a fantastic uh, tutor for the questioning system, because, you know, all of the questions that students have asked and all of the answers that students have given, they're like uh, really rich and um, they, they'd be absolutely fantastic. Right. So, yeah, you go. You're building an AI system, essentially, with all the C++ knowledge that would take you all the way from, you know, bits and bytes converting from hexadecimal to uh you know decimal and stuff like that all the way to in red uh traversing a graph it's probably one of the most complex structures um 
that you may encounter in in in, in you know in the near future. So it, it's it's all fun, okay? It's all fun. Um, I have I have uh, you know I had a, a lot of fun creating the questing system uh, and and uh, and and playing with it for a long time, also. And I also thought that if I was a student like you guys, okay, this is the, this is what I would have loved to do, right? And me meaning this is the way this is the way, this is what I would have loved to do as as a course to uh, rather than a traditional course because i mean traditional courses are boring you know <laughs> and uh for me too for teaching one too because I, I got tired of it after a while that's why i started doing this and in fact you know at, at foothill they wanted to they want me to uh, they, they you know i know even though i'm uh, you know I've, as, as i said i'm going to retire i said you know they want me to teach the traditional class again uh face to face in in uh in in, in the classroom so i'm going to be doing that next quarter uh, but still, my preference is for this. Okay? Even if I teach the traditional class, it's just going to be, you know, just like this in face to face, face to face. But I will make sure that everybody is discussing things on Reddit and helping each other on Reddit. Because um, I think that is really where the value is. And really, none of this, what you're creating on Reddit is for me. Uh, and it's for anyone else, right? And not even for your employer. Even, uh, yeah, it is for you later on when you take a look at it. You will be like totally fabricated, right? So at that age and that time, and I I did all this, I made all these posts, right? And who knows, you may even link up with someone from 15 years ago. Hey, we quested together on this, and you know, interesting. So all of these really cool things that you can um, <clears throat> absolutely do. So yeah, yeah, please, please do. Um, anyway, I, I I came here today to uh, ask you uh, if you had any questions about the final 7:44. I got a two B meeting at uh, eight o'clock. Uh, two to a meeting at eight o'clock uh, but you know i got 15 minutes uh, but i can leave before if you guys want to talk amongst yourself if you have any questions for me i'm happy to answer uh and uh, next week right monday or so someone send me email okay because by uh, saturday the zoom uh, the canvas site will close okay the canvas site will close so that um i can't do a zoom on canvas and get you uh, log into the zoom in order to discuss your grades if you want to grades just send me an email. I'll send you my, you know, non-foothill Zoom link, so that anyone can. You don't have to be uh, logged into my portal in order to click that. You don't have to be because the close courses, uh, the course uh, cl closes. So uh, after the, you click on that link and you can get in the meeting and ask me about your grade and all. Friday, yeah, let's do it on Monday or something. Okay, so that's not do Saturday or Sunday. Let's do it Monday after ten, right? After 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 eleven, after eleven on Monday. If you any time after Monday, it could be even Tuesday. Set up a meeting. Those who want to know about the grade can set it up. <clears throat> and I'll attend the meeting. Any questions about your final? You can ask now. You can ask later. I just had one quick just just clarification. Thank you all. Okay. Go ahead. Before uh, Sorry, I, I wanted to thank you all for doing this class. Okay, you've been fantastic students and and doing a great job. So thanks. That's Sorry. I to, that, no, no, you're good. I just want to quickly balance. So the final report is due by tomorrow, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tomorrow, uh, tomorrow, tomorrow's the final day. Yeah, yeah, tomorrow. Sounds good. Okay, thank you. Wait, and then sorry. So you said um, since Zoom is uh, Canvas is going down, if we want to contact you for a meeting after, I just send me an email. Yeah, yeah, okay. you just message me on Reddit. Yeah, message okay. me on yeah, Reddit. No, that works. That yeah. works too. Uh, or you can just post a post on Reddit too. You make a post on okay. Reddit saying, "Hey, how many guys want to attend uh, a, a, a Zoom?" Yeah, actually, that's better. Make a post on someone. Make a post on Reddit saying, uh, "Does anybody want to attend a meeting on Monday or Tuesday <clears throat> with uh, uh, Anand to ask if uh, ask about the grades?" All right, because I should have the grades finalized by then for sure, uh, and then I'll send a link to how many ever ever people, um, you know, confirm. Uh -huh. And then I'll post one it. more I'll question. Post one more question is, um, so there's the pupping and the dogging. It's, so the dogging is due tonight, technically, if you're trying to get more points off the quests. Ah, uh, yeah. To, uh, tonight is the Wednesday. Yeah, tomorrow is the final. Yeah, to, tonight. Okay. Yeah. So like, if you want any more points, you should kind of in like tonight. Okay. To by by tomorrow morning. Okay. By tomorrow, tomorrow morning. morning. Okay. Cool. And then final is going to be just multiple choice. Like the mid um, not just multiple choice, it's like objective oh, okay. all these other kinds. Okay. Just like the mid Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah. And um <clears throat> you can take it anytime as yeah, just like the midterm. Anything else about the final that I want to mention? Yeah, we'll focus more on the second half of the quarter. 
than on the first quarter or for the first half. But you know, you need to know the first half too, like bits and bytes, but you know, bit, bit manipulation, which that, that should all be there. But everything else, yeah. I don't think you'll have any problems with the final, um, basically. Uh, most of you here today uh, are, I've been doing really well. Um, and so I, I don't think you'll have any big issues with the final. So uh, for, a, for a, in a large part, it's on the students. They got to figure out which class to enroll in, right? And, uh, and what, what, what sections to do and uh, how to learn, right? How to learn. Even if you go to a, another class, which gives you free, free A's, but maybe you, you, won't, uh, you, you won't be failed if you miss some corner cases and edge cases in, these, in the code you're writing, yeah? So you can still pass it and you can copy the code and pass it, but, uh, but you can still do a good job there too in someone else's section. And say, well, you know what? Even though I can get 20 out of 20 for this lab by doing a half-assed assignment, I'm not going to do a half-assed assignment because I'm not happy until the whole thing, you know, checks out properly. So you can now, armed with your knowledge of 2D and how to set up tests, you can say, even in my 2C class where you know these edge cases are not required for passing, I'm going to do my test and make sure that this data structure that I create is actually professional grade. Yeah, and uh, so you can do all that you know, regardless of. So it's ultimately up to the student. And, and you know, the colleges will be history in like for, you know, I think 10 years from now, there was, I don't think there's gonna be any colleges, formal colleges, because education is just gonna be out there. And there'll, there'll be, you know, automa you know uh, AI tutors, right? that'll be like real one-on-one -on -one teachers. You can just get them, yeah? And so all of that will be out there. Uh, but until then, uh, I think, you know, the students have to really put some effort in to find out what to enroll in.